Once again, back, it's the incredible Dale Valor's Inner Game Podcast. I'm rapper turned dating coach Dale Valor, your inner game wingman. Listen, here's the deal. If you're new to this podcast, what we're talking about is inner game. What is inner game? Inner game is the relationship that you have with you. If all the other relationships in your life are suffering, in large part, and usually it's due to the relationship that you have with you sucks, right? So if you don't like yourself, how can you expect anybody else to as you know either? So here's the deal, man. We're gonna go deep on so many inner game concepts in this podcast. I really am glad that you're here. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a long timer, welcome back. And um Let's hop in. All right, guys. So I am excited, okay, because this is a guy that I was talking to about a week ago. We we, we connected on Facebook. Uh, he's got a podcast, The Otter's Den. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be on his podcast here before too long. As a matter of fact, Monday, right, Keith? That's the new show. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, so that's going to be coming up. So uh, look for that. It's, <laughs> anybody who knows me knows that I promote the shit out of stuff that I'm associated with. You know what I mean? So um, so I'm looking forward to that. So you'll see more about that and everything. I could not be more excited about it. Uh, but today, we got my man Keith Ottersberg of Ottersberg Podcast. And you know what? Like, it's so dope, man. I love, I love the combination of things that you bring to the table for your podcast, man. You know, like self-development, which, you know, look, that's that's my space all day long, right? I mean, it, the, the inner game book, all that, you know, like that that that's where I live. But on top of that, another peak interest of mine, and, and this is something I want, we'll, we'll obviously talk about the podcast and your own personal story and, and, and all that, but man, do I love paranormal stuff. You know, and I think that's so dope, like the, the, the culmination of the two, because the two are so, like such unrelated spaces that but at the same time, they're they both, yeah, they're yeah. both super interesting to me. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and I got to tell you my paranormal story, too. And, and yeah, I, I, I got to break that down for you. But Do Keith, I'm excited, man. To my left, up, side, down. I don't know how <laughs> I don't know how my guy's going to edit this. So he could be anywhere on the screen, but I trust the confidant Shabam here. And yes. um, so just to, just to get started, man, you know, when we were talking on the phone uh, last week, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me is your story and your uh, um, just the fact that, like, you had to rebuild your life from the ground up, like figuratively and literally. You know what I mean? Yes. Like where you're sitting right now, you built that, right? Yeah. Yeah. At one time, I, I could not sit here because there was no floor. <laughs> um, I had a house fire. Yeah. And it was over 1600 degrees in here. A lot of plastics, uh, cleaning chemicals, garden chemicals were in that fire. And so that soot got all the way down to the block behind the plaster, behind the lath, behind the paint, behind the wallpaper. So it was toxic. Everything had to come out. Mm -hmm. Two-story house, full attic, full basement. You open the door, you look down, there's my basement floor, block walls all the way up to my roof. Wow. Was anything salvageable? Very, very little. Um, if you can see it, you can see it. Uh, that bookcase way back there? Yeah. Yeah. That was an original built-in bookcase. There was two of them, and I was mm -hmm. able to salvage those. Okay. Um, yeah. A couple of other things, a um, uh, little bookcase over here that my grandpa built, my grandma's chest of drawers, very sacred things to me were spared. Oh, that's a little piece. That mm -hmm. sign right there, that little wooden sign, yeah. with white vinyl letters, uh -huh. it says, everything is going to be all right. I was going through some very traumatic times with the paranormal and I heard a song, and that's what it was. It's a country song. Everything's yeah, going to be yeah. all right. And anytime I got down, I just kept playing it. And then all of a sudden on the Internet, here's this sign. I bought it. I hung it right there on my wall. And that is right where the fire came up. That sign was in that fire. That sign should be ashes. 
The white vinyl lettering is still there. It's a little curled. The edge is singed just a little bit. Yeah. But that sign lived through that fire. That's how do you, awesome. How do you explain that? How yeah. do you explain that? That's really cool, man. And you know what? The, the, the fact that it didn't burn up, but it still has some of the scarring from the, yeah. like that, that makes it even cooler in, in my like opinion. Just like me. <laughs> what, 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 what caused that fire? Electrical. Okay. Was um, that like old, like old electric? Yeah. Yeah. What happened was um, they tried to blame me. They tried to say I burn it down. Oh, wow. Um, they couldn't find the cause. I kept telling them, I can show it to you. I already found it. And so finally, the absolute head fire marshal came down and mm -hmm. he's, I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the, the origination of the fire. I'm like, okay, I can point right to it. He's like, okay, let me go find it. Cool. Go do that. And so he brought me in. This is where the fire started. Exactly. Now, have you found the cause yet? No, I'm going to look for that. Why don't you go back outside? And he comes back out a little bit later. And he says, okay, King, I'm having a difficult time. Why don't you come in and help me look? I'm like, okay. So I walk inside. We walk down to the basement. I put my hand on a, on a burnt string of copper hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to give you a hint. And he looks up at it. And then he looks over, he looks how that wire was ran. He takes a piece of metal, puts it back up. Okay, we got this, you're good. The low voltage wire for the door doorbell, like 24 volts. Mm. When they put the heater and furnace in before I bought the house, they used just a sheet of metal going over the, the floor joists. Um, in fact, I could show you like that. Yeah. They just put a sheet of metal over two of those and use that area as the cold air return. Over time, you get pet hair, dust, all kinds of stuff that builds up in there. Mm -hmm. When they put that up, they crossed that doorbell wire. Every time the heater kicked on, the AC kicked on, it vibrated that. Eventually, it wore through the insulation on the wire. It sparked and whoosh. Mm -hmm. The okay. AC was running, sucked it in, sent it out. It Yeah, and up it went. Now, did they think that that you did it because you found it like you no. were like right there. No, no, okay. they could not find a cause. Oh, I thought, okay. So, I'm, so I'm since they could not did. find a cause. I somehow did it. All right. Okay. No. No. All right. Yeah. All right. I got insurance. You. So why did they think that you were associated with it? Because they couldn't find a the cause. They thought I I'd set my own home on fire for the insurance. But if they could, what, what they don't understand is eventually I was able to prove this to them. Yeah. I still owed like sixty, seventy thousand dollars on the house. Uh -huh. Um, with today's costs, there's no way I would have ever got a dime if I'm gonna re, you know, I could have took the money and run. I didn't How long this was this? um two years ago, September sixth. Oh, so this was not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know yeah, that. I'm, okay. I'm still building. Um, but the only estimate I could get from the only contractor was $306,000 to repair my home. Mm. Um, the, I maxed the insurance out at 281. That includes all of my belongings and everything. I still had to pay the house off. No way I could have paid anybody to do this. Wow. And um, I was with uh, a girlfriend at the time. And I said, you know, I'm going to have to do this. And she's like, you, you, tell me, you can't do this. You can't do this. You know, take yeah. the money on. And some other issues came up and, I had to say, you know what, we no, we're we're done here. Yeah. And yeah. I sat down one day, and I'm like, you know what, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm not gonna know unless I try. And so I came over here, and I grabbed a hammer, and a crowbar, and I started, and I took everything out of here, board by board, bucket by bucket, uh, put it in a dumpster, all of my personal belongings, um, and then I, I had it cleaned, and I started rebuilding. Okay. And the day that I could walk from my front door to the back door on this floor, I cried. Wow. Little things, you know, taking little things, you know, for advantage or, you know, advantage a little thing. Yeah. My words aren't coming through. I've got a traumatic brain injury from car accident. That happens sometimes. So if cheeseburger comes out in the middle of the census, don't be surprised. Um, <laughs> but that's how I want to put it. You know, being able to turn my faucet on and brush my teeth. I couldn't do that here for a long time. I couldn't sit on my floor. I couldn't walk across the floor. I couldn't walk up my stairs because I didn't have any stairs. Right. I right. built the stairs, but I had to start in a foundation in the basement. 
That's where I had to start. I had to fix all the cracks in the wall. I had to chisel out all the block that was damaged and then mix new stuff to shove in there and seal it and then seal the walls and then paint the walls and make them nice and shiny again. And I had to build up that strong foundation to keep building. And that's just like what I had to do with my life. Yeah. I had to start at the foundation. I had to look in the mirror yeah. and say, okay, what, what are your issues here in life? Okay. Why do you have these issues? Oh, it's your soul. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had to tell myself that you have been a not so good person in your past. Let's change that. Do and you think that the fire that, was the catalyst for that? Is a, a large part of it. Yeah. Um, another large part was having this, the the dead files here. Um, it's a TV show. Yeah, you told um, me about that. Let's talk about that a little bit. Amy Allen and Steve Chevy. Um, I I fought for four years to get him here. Yeah. And I, I finally did. A uh, little bitty town of 1,683, 7-Eleven, interesting number. Um, but they came and they found and they did the show. And uh, I've had the, you know, my homes investigated many times and they've always got evidence, but nobody could ever find out why um, I had the activity that I had. I mean, I have been choked out up against the wall with my feet this far off the ground. In fact, I still got red marks from it. Mm -hmm. um, I have been pushed down six to eight inches into my bed being choked out. I have been ripped out of bed while I'm awake by my hair, drugged down these stairs and thrown on the living room floor. Uh, the activity was dangerous. Um, oh. Nobody could ever find the cause, but Amy did. Uh, we filmed the reveal right yeah. there in that living room. And when she came downstairs, I never got to see her until that point. She looked at me with a face of horror like I have never seen and I knew right then what the problem was. Now, was that before the fire or after the fire? Before the fire. Now, okay, so a couple of things here. Um, you know, with the, the the paranormal activity on that property, yeah. once the fire happened, would you... I know for me, going through my mind would be like, okay, this is a sign. I don't need to be here no more. Let me let me let me take that insurance money and move. <laughs> you know I mean? and then, but, at one time, that would have been me. But when they were filming, Steve kept telling me, "You got to move. You got to move." I'm like, no, I ain't moving. I'm fighting. This is my home. And he's like, "You're willing." I was still married at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, you're willing to risk your your marriage to save this home. I'm like, no, I'm willing to, to risk it to save our lives. Because if we move, this is going to follow us. It happens over and over and over. It what, is a what? repeat cycle. And that is because okay. what was the original cause of the issue was inside of me. I was the cause. I would draw us, my family, to a haunted location. We'd move. I'd pick a haunted house every time. Every no, time. Okay, so... It was so it wasn't that it was following you. It's just that the places you were picking, for whatever reason, you just kind of gravitated to. This the thing inside me. I was I'm just gonna say it. Anybody wants to think I'm crazy? I'm good with that. Um <laughs> the best people are. Um I got possessed when I was six years old up until five little five years ago. Um Amy sent a team up from Kentucky called the Spirit Mechanics. Um, they do a lot of dead files cases. I'm now a member of the spirit mechanics. Um, I've got to help on two dead files cases and we gave a couple families their lives back. Um, you know, interestingly, uh, speaking of the dead files, now I've never actually seen the show full disclosure. Okay. okay. I've never seen it, but just today, just today, I, I, I cut on Plex, right? I'm, I'm, uh -huh. doing, I'm doing some work. And a lot of times I put TV on in the background. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> and um, I was doing some work and I, I turn on Plex and in the recommendations was the Ted Files. Season 10, episode 11, uh, title is called Till Death. That you know, I'm going to watch that before I come on yours. All right. Okay? All I'm, right. I'm going to watch it. Just, just, you will yeah. be able to see the difference in me, um, health, the home. Um, everything you, wow. you, you, you'll be amazed. I'm sure. That's um, incredible. But that, that actually started my healing journey because they came up from Kentucky. 
Mm-hmm. They removed everything from the property. Then they removed everything from the home. Then they removed the thing from me. And when he t- pulled that thing out of me, it took three fourths of my memories. Kids you not. Um, I used to be a damn good saxophone player. I can barely play Mary Had a Little Lamb now. Um, I can't uh, even hold one. <laughs> I could not remember my childhood. I could not remember my kids being born. Um, I thought I was still married to my first wife for a little while afterwards. I mean, it, it was confusing as hell. And over time, the more I started to heal myself and help others, Spirit said, "At a boy, there you go. Here, have now, these memories now, back." Now, okay, devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Now, you had said that you were in a car accident and had a traumatic yeah. brain injury. Yes. Okay. Do you? What would you say to somebody who would suggest? Well, that's got to be related. Um, It does affect my memory, but my short term memory. Mm -hmm. Um, And it affects how the words that I think of up here get out here. Mm -hmm. A couple other things. But um, this isn't going to cause a massive elimination of my lifetime's memories in five minutes. Okay. I didn't hit my head again. Now, if I had hit my head again, okay. That's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, but all he did was remove an entity out of me and my okay. life changed. Okay. All right. So now let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. The trade-off. Okay. Now, okay, you have um whatever, you know, whatever is uh uh possessing you, yeah, you have that eliminated, but at the cost of three fourths of your memory. Like I, I gotta believe that, you know, like I don't have kids. Shabam has like 40. But you wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am rabbit. I don't have kids. All right. But I gotta believe, you know, obviously the the, the birth <laughs> of your children is something is a memory that you want to hang on to. Like that's absolutely, you know, like that's a very impactful memory, you know. Absolutely. I got it back. Oh, you got it. okay, okay, cool. As I worked on myself and healed myself, mm-hmm. um, I was then able to help others more. Um, so while I was healing myself, I was helping others heal, helping them with the paranormal, eliminate that out of their lives so they could start their healing journey. And as I did that, spirit said, good, here, here's this to work through. Because I, I went back to when I was six years old and I picked my life apart. Why did this happen? Let's look at this. And I've done it several times. I'm still doing it today. Um, but as I would get the new memories back, I would have to do it again. Yeah. Um, so it's an ongoing thing. Okay. Okay. I, got uh, you. I had a question. Did you not yes. like, you know, basically put cameras all around your house? I didn't and... have security cameras. Okay. So did they ever record something suspicious or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had paranormal activity recorded, um, but unfortunately that computer burned up in the fire. So mm. that footage is gone. Um, wow. But while we were filming, um, Steve and the film crew very seldom ever witness any paranormal activity when they're filming. And the entire crew froze in their tracks twice while they were here filming. Um, we were in the garage and it sounded like somebody took a drawer full of wrenches and threw it in the other garage bay. And they just, I thought they were going to pee themselves. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, look, that's one of the things I told you about. Come on, let's keep going. You know, Steve's like, what the? Mm-hmm. And then we were in the basement filming. And they didn't have the cameras rolling at the time. I wish they did, but I actually got scratched on my neck. Um, Steve saw it. He watched it. Um, he's like, what the? I'm like, dude, <laughs> this is why you're here. This is why you're here. You yeah. know, let's, let's keep going before I kick you out of my house. Because, yeah, <laughs> come on, let's go. Now, okay, this is something I got to know. Okay, it, you know what? It, you know what's so dope about this? This c- complete side note here, and this wasn't yeah. even something that I. Pl- I mean, we just we just talked like last week. That's kind of yeah. when we met. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this was not something that was pre-planned. But goddamn, if this ain't good for like since Halloween's coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. Because of uh, the the closer we get to Halloween, um, Halloween. Um, the the thinner that veil gets. Mm, so, interesting. All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Um, why did people put costumes on to scare the spirits away? Yeah, I that's where that, that came from. 
yeah. and they would they would give offerings to the spirits. Yeah, Here, leave That's us like alone. A druid leave thing, us alone. Right? Um, I don't think it was druid, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay. I don't remember. All right. um, but that is where that tradition came from. You know, yeah. all of our traditions came from other older traditions, sure. and we changed them. Yeah. Um, into something else. Yep. Um, you know, Easter. Yeah. Um, that is, I'm not even going to get into that because that yeah. gets built with well, like else. wedding yeah. rings, you know, like that goes back to uh, like uh, Roman times, I believe. Same thing with uh, um, uh, what you call it, at a, at, like at a wedding, you know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. where, where you kind of like cheers the, the mm-hmm. I, I can't think the of those. Right? Yeah, toast, yes. The toast. Yeah, thank you. Um, jumping yeah. a broom, hand fasting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a, a way of, joining two people into yeah. a relationship right yeah no doubt no doubt so only in america do you have to get a license yeah <laughs> yeah uh, uh, but <laughs> i'm with you, I'm with you. This. Um, I'll stop there. <laughs> so <laughs> when okay so you weren't home when the fire happened no um we almost were uh we had my grandkids all weekend and we were tuckered out uh-huh. um when daughter picked them up we were going to go upstairs and take a nap and yeah. something said, no, get the hell out of the house. Well, thank like, God for that, what? man. You know, especially with the lake. grandkids being there. Let's let the house breathe a little bit. Let's go to the lake and, you know, we can make a video. Cause that's one thing we did is we made funny videos to make people laugh and, you know, brighten their day. Yeah. And that's what we were doing when I got the call. I'm like, Hey dude, your house on fire. Okay. That's, that was my next question. How did you no. know, Like, did you come home yeah. to it or like the, uh, so, somebody called you? Okay. Got gotcha. you. The EMS chief. Um, I was on city council for six and a half years. Oh, okay. not. Um, you know, long haired, heavy, black leather jacket wearing guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, my EMS chief lived across the street from me and yeah. she sent me a text, dude, are you okay? Do you need anything? I'm like, we're at the lake. What do you need? And so she called me and like, dude, your house is on fire. I'm standing here watching it. Um, we drove. Wow. What was your initial thought when you got that? When you got Just, when they said that to you, what was a, your initial thought? My dog and my cat. Oh, did they make it? No. Oh man, that sucks, man. No, I'm sorry, man. It, it was actually kind. Of, I've I've had to look at this whole experience in the dark before I could find the light. I was in the dark for a long time. Yeah, naturally, the loss, the trauma, yeah, the confusion, the whys, the hows. Um, but. Both of my pets were older. They were having health issues. They were hurting. Uh-huh. Um, the fire was oxygen deprived, so they right. just went to sleep. Oh, okay, good. Um, well, that's good. At so least. they they didn't die of smoke inhalation. They didn't burn. Yeah. Um, but uh, I got here, and I was going to walk in this house and get them. Yeah. And I, I don't blame you, man. I'm a big animal the, guy, man. You the know? fire chief, uh, the sheriff, the police chief, they all got right in front of me, started pushing me back. No. Like, okay, fine. So as soon as they turn around, I went around back. I kicked my back door in, and uh, my my chow at that time, I had her on a uh, a three hundred pound tie out along with being fenced in. Yeah, um, she could give a mean. Um, and I, I grabbed a hold of that. I started pulling, and I thought she was moving. And then I pulled her out. That was just her slipping over the candle edge and out the door. Mm-hmm. She didn't make it, but I got to hold her. You know. Yeah. Um, I did get to hold my cat. They did find my cat. Oh, um, man. but that's what if, she may pop in here. I, I have a new little friend now. Okay. Freya. I got me another chow chow. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me I could not have another chow chow. Do not tell a Scorpio that you, they cannot do something because by God, we will do it and take pictures and video. <laughs> 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 so yeah, she, she's amazing. Um, big part of my life and here pretty soon, um, I'm looking for a black Maine coon cat. Um, okay. she likes to play rough and, Main coons get big, so yeah, I think that'd be a good match. I'm complete side note here. All right, yeah, I know this guy. All right, unfortunately, I know this guy. I'm not. I'm not a fan of this dude. Okay, okay. He's, okay. He, he's just kind of like in in uh uh you know similar circles that I run in. And now this guy also coincidentally uh had a fire and lost both of his cats. Okay, but. Not only, and then by the way, these two cats, different breeds, unrelated. He yeah. got them as kittens. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's in uh the Guinness Book of World Records for having uh the tallest cat in the world, and the other cat had the longest tail in the world. What are the odds of that? Right. I mean, like he's been on like 
um, you know, like different, like, you know, like talk shows and things like that, you know, uh-huh. like, you know, like daytime TV uh-huh. talk shows with, with these cats and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And he lost them both in a, in a house fire as well. But yeah, what, what are the odds of that, man? You got the t- like, got them at different times. And as kids, yeah. like, you don't know that it's obviously going to be the tallest cat and one with the longest tail. It well, just ev- happened that ev- way. Everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was saying. You'll find the blessings in this house fire. Um, there were many. Yeah. Uh, the house was supposed to have all new electrical. Where you could see the electrical, it wasn't there. Yeah. But through the walls, no, still the old knob and two twisted. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah. w- when I was tearing the house down, you know, I see charred wood next to a wire. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. the wires loosened up. They were arcing. This place was a tinderbox waiting to go up anyway. Yeah. Um, there is a main beam. It goes from my front door over here in the wall. Yeah. And the only thing they had supporting that whole second floor was the um, team stud and jack stud of the doorway. Gotcha. Four two by fours. Over here, they had two two by fours nailed together, which were separating and bowing. Yeah. The doorway wasn't even sitting on a beam. It was sitting on three quarter inch planking, which was breaking and sinking into the basement. That would have fell in on us. Oh, wow. So I've got that beefed up like no other mother. (laughs) Um, But I mean, there are so many aspects of what could have happened. And this fire eliminated everything. Okay. So had insurance. See, there's the words again. Insulation. Yeah. It was just the block wall. Uh, a one by, you know, boards go up and down, and then the, the plaster lath nailed to those, and then plaster. Now I went back with two by four furring strips, so I've got insulation in my home now. You know, blessing after blessing, but I had to look for them. No, well, man, I know that you got a lot of information out of this particular episode. Listen, if you need to go a little bit deeper, always feel free to reach out to me. Look, there's a few ways you can do that. You can shoot me an email. You can send me a DM. I'm easy to find. But the best place that you can find me is at freegiftfromdale.com. It's in the uh, description of the episode. And you're going to get a couple of free gifts there. You'll get the uh, uh, first chapter of my book, Inner Game. And you will also find an exercise to help you find out about yourself and who you really, truly are at the core. Okay. And listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel or the podcast, make sure you do so, man. It takes you one second to do it. It means the world to us here. Okay. Uh, If you know somebody who could really use this information, feel free to share it, man. Don't don't hold it to yourself. (laughs) You know what I mean? So uh, we will see you in the next one.